a very good day. Uh, this session we are going to discuss about adrenergic neurotransmitters, the receptors in adrenergic system and their functions, and classification of adrenergic agents. The major neurotransmitters in the adrenergic system is norepinephrine or noradrenaline. And these are released in all the sites of adrenergic neurons. Whereas there are other minor neurotransmitters which are released are epinephrine or adrenaline, dopamine, and as well as acetylcholine. Now let's see the number of adrenergic receptors and their second messenger system. The adrenergic receptors you need to know is broadly classified into two alpha receptors, beta receptors, and there is dopamine receptors. Alpha receptors, there are two types, alpha 1 and alpha 2. Alpha 1 is a type of GQ coupled receptor, that is G protein coupled receptors, which is GQ subtype. And uh, when the GQ is activated, it would lead to release or synthesis of IP3 DHG. And there, it will lead to other cascades like influx of calcium and so on. The stimulation of alpha-1 receptors, they are usually present in various smooth muscles and their basic function is to contract the most of the vascular smooth muscle. For example, in the blood vessels, it would cause contraction of the smooth muscles and leading to vasoconstriction. It can also contract the pupillary radial muscles, thereby causing pupillary dilatation or also called as midriasis or dilatation of the pupil. It also causes contraction of the pilomotor smooth muscles which causes goosebumps. It also causes contraction of the sphincters in the urinary side of the prostate, urinary bladder as well as anal canal. So contraction of the sphincter will usually lead to retention of the urine as well as stools. The second receptor you should be aware of is alpha 2 receptors. Alpha 2 receptor is unique in the sense that it is mostly present in presynaptic neurons. That is, it is present at the presynaptic side. And the second messenger system is cyclic AMP. What it does basically is it's a G coupled protein receptor, GI subtype. GI means it will inhibit adenyl cyclase. By inhibiting adenyl cyclase, it would reduce cyclic AMP. The function of alpha-2 receptor is mainly to decrease sympathetic outflow from the medulla and thereby it reduces the sympathetic activity in the body. And other actions are mainly in the GI tract where it causes relaxation of the GI smooth muscles and as well as it has other functions in pancreas. The second type of receptors which you should know is beta receptors. In beta there are three types, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. Beta 1 is mainly present in the heart, cardiac muscle and as well as in the kidney which is juxtaglomerular cells. Now in the heart whenever beta 1 receptors are stimulated it leads to increase in force of contraction increase in the heart rate and increase in the conduction whereas stimulation of juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney will lead to release of renin and that release of renin will in turn cause activation of angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 and with the help of enzyme called as ACE that is angiotensin converting enzyme converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 thereby causes vasoconstriction and as well as releases aldosterone from the adrenal cortex and this aldosterone in turn will cause sodium and water retention. Beta 1 action is actually through this receptor that is beta 1 receptor which is GS subtype that is stimulatory type G coupled protein receptor and activation of beta 1 receptors will hence lead to activation of adenyl cyclase thereby increasing cyclic AMP. The beta 2 receptors Beta-2 receptors mainly causes 
relaxation of the smooth muscles so wherever they are present say for example in the gi tract it would call, it would relax smooth muscles thereby reducing gi motility it would relax the urinary bladder thereby it increases the compliance of the urinary bladder it causes relaxation of the uterus and uh, especially the pregnant uterus and thereby it can delay the labor it can also the most important effect what you should understand is by stimulating beta 2 receptors in the bronchial smooth muscles it would cause bronchodilatation it means it relaxes the bronchial smooth muscles and it would relieve bronchial asthma and the other uses or other functions where you could see is in ciliary epithelium and vascular smooth muscles in the vascular smooth muscles especially it causes vasodilatation and thereby increases the blood flow to the skeletal muscles and the action on the liver it mainly increases the glucose output causes gluconeogenesis and causes breakdown of glycogen and all these actions are mediated through g coupled protein receptor which is gs subtype that is it also stimulates cyclic amp and increases the cyclic amp beta 3 action is a rather weak action uh, especially epinephrine norepinephrine can act on it and it will usually causes lipolysis and this is also gs subtype which causes stimulation of adrenal cyclase and increase in cyclic amp so all in all you have to remember all the beta receptor are gs subtype gs subtype that is the increase in cyclic amp levels whereas alpha 1 is gq subtype which increases ip3 dag cascade system whereas alpha 2 is gi which is inhibitory type now other two receptors which are there or which are present in adrenergic system are dopamine 1 and dopamine 2 dopamine 1 receptor mainly stimulation would cause vasodilatation of specific blood vessels especially the renal that is kidney splanchnic system as well as mesenteric blood vessels so thereby it increases the blood flow to the renal system and as well as upper intestine and d1 is also a stimulatory receptor which is gs subtype which causes stimulation of adenyl cyclase and thereby increase in cyclic amp other receptor is d2 which is predominantly present in cns we are not going to discuss that in detail uh, those details will be discussed in CNS section. Whereas uh, here, this is also GI subtype, which will inhibit adenyl cyclase, thereby reduce cyclic AMP. Next, we'll discuss classification of the adrenergic agents. Now, the two important classifications which I would like to tell you is the first is the type of agonist. Now, depending on the type of agonist, it's classified into three groups. One is directly acting sympathomimetics directly acting sympathomimetic means the drug will directly stimulate the adrenergic receptors so all these drugs stimulate specific type of adrenergic receptors examples are adrenaline or epinephrine norepinephrine or noradrenaline isoproteinol or isoprenaline phenylephrine the second group of drug would be indirectly acting sympathomimetics now indirectly acting sympathomimetics means they do not directly stimulate these receptors what they do is they will increase the availability of the existing neurotransmitters for example tyramine and amphetamine tyramine and amphetamine actually helps in the release of the neurotransmitters so they release norepinephrine at various sites in the body Whereas the third group of drug is mixed action sympathomimetics or mixed acting sympathomimetics. Here, basically, the drugs will act by both ways by stimulating the adrenergic receptors and as well as by releasing the neurotransmitters. Classical example for this is that is ephedrine. Another classification which will help you to understand adrenergic agents in better ways is uh, classification based on the receptor actions. Now in that the first drug would be all adrenergic receptors means the drug which can stimulate all the adrenergic receptors that is alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 and that's the only drug which belongs to this category is epinephrine or adrenaline. The second group is 
all receptors except beta 2 and in that category it is norepinephrine so remember norepinephrine except beta 2 means it does not activate beta 2 receptors but otherwise it will activate all the rest of the adrenergic receptors the third group of drug is one which stimulates do dopamine 1 receptors stimulates beta 1 and alpha 1 receptors and that example is dopamine dopamine mainly stimulates d1 beta 1 and alpha 1 there is another analog of dopamine which is phenaldopam which is specific to dopamine 1 receptor the next group is selective to beta receptors now these drugs will only stimulate beta 1 and beta 2 receptors example isoproteinol or isoprenaline the next group is which stimulates only beta 1 receptors which includes dobutamine and there are drugs which can stimulate only beta 2 but at higher dose they can lose their selectivity means they can stimulate as well as beta 1 but they are mainly selective to beta 2 and such drugs examples are albuterol or salbutamol terbutalin formoterol salmeterol and there are drugs which can stimulate only alpha receptors also called as alpha agonist which includes phenylephrine nafazolin oxymetazolin xylometazolin so this finishes the introduction of adrenergic agents the classification adrenergic receptors and their functions thank you very much for listening to my video and uh, we'll discuss more on adrenergic drugs and blockers in the, my next sessions thank you very much